Kami White was slightly later to the party than other Street Fighter mainstays like Ryu, Chun-Li, and Ken, but the Killer Bee has proven to be one of the most impactful and important characters to ever join the franchise. She quickly became and stayed immensely popular as fans fell in love with both her visual and gameplay designs, instantly earning her a seat at the cool kids table and making her one of the most commonly featured characters across all Street Fighter rosters. Where will Capcom take Kami as Street Fighter's story finally extends beyond the events of Third Strike and looks at her oldest version yet in Street Fighter VI? Let's look at her past to take some guesses about her future as we delve into the full story of Kami leading into Street Fighter VI. Canonically speaking, Kami officially popped up during the events of Street Fighter Alpha 3. She was introduced as a brainwashed agent of Shadaloo, physically enhanced by biotechnology to do M. Bison's bidding as one of his many dolls. She's specifically referred to by her code name, Killer B, and is sent to assassinate the wise old yoga master, Dalsum. Now Sim winds up freeing her from Bison's mind bullets and giving her autonomy for the first time, which is both a blessing and a curse as Kami has virtually no memory save for the fact that Bison was her master, and almost a blank slate in terms of an identity. Kami is not only an assassin, but is actually a much bigger part of Bison's plans, so he sends Vega to retrieve her as opposed to kill her. This doesn't work out though, as Kami fends off her would-be collector, but not before he leaves her with some ominous words about her identity that cause her to seek out Bison for answers. When she does confront him, Bison tells her that she's indeed a clone of him and that he plans to move his soul into her body once he's done with his current one, which is deteriorating from psycho power. Bison eludes capture and Kami heads to his base to free the dolls. She does so, but passes out near the base, which is now exploding because, hey, explosions raise stakes. Now you'd think that maybe one of the dolls would come back and help her out, but no. It's actually Vega from earlier on in the story who comes back and saves Kami from the crumbling base because he, and I quote, doesn't want to let a beautiful person die. He leaves her on the British government's doorstep to be found by the Delta Red military group. Now if you're thinking that almost none of these story points here seem to be connected with any logical thread, you're absolutely right. On to Street Fighter 2. You remember that Delta Red military group? Well, now Kami is a part of it, but she woke up with amnesia initially so she doesn't remember anything from the events of Alpha and before except for how to fight really, really well. Bison puts on the second World Warrior Tournament and Kami feels this strange connection to him, even though she doesn't know who he is, so she enters the tourney and confronts him once again. He explains, now for the second time, how she's a clone of him and how he used to use her as an assassin. Street Fighter 2 is super hazy in general, and there's not a lot of concrete canon that comes out of it, especially in terms of its resolution. But it is followed by Street Fighter 4, chronologically speaking, and Capcom used that game to fill in a bunch of the blanks. Bison is chased out into a forest by Team Good Guys, Kami included, after the World Warrior Tournament vaguely concludes. They basically corner him, and he performs a psycho kamikaze that doesn't kill anyone but seemingly him, and, spoilers, it doesn't actually kill him either. Anyway, there's a bit of a time jump into the rest of Street Fighter 4 as Kami, Guile, and Chun-Li team up to investigate the Shadaloo Intimidation Network, which is being run by Seth, another one of Bison's body clones, while Bison is presumed dead. Chun-Li is attacked and hospitalized by Jury, so the team aims to track Jury down and do so with the anonymous help of sexy secret spy mom, C. Viper. They find Jury at a secret facility that houses a few of the Shadaloo dolls, which apparently all went back to being dolls after being freed in Alpha, and again, Capcom hasn't historically prioritized consistency over convenience with these stories, so we're just gonna roll with it. Anyway, Jury is there and has beaten both dolls and is escaping on a jet. Kami chases after her, but she and one of the dolls, Juni, are knocked out of the jet while it's in midair. They survive, however, because they land in snow. Kami recuperates and is sent by Team Good Guys to find Ryu, who has been missing. She finds Ryu at the same moment sexy secret spy mom C. Viper does too, who we should mention is an undercover, neutralish kind of good guy posing as a bad guy. Kami gets her ass handed to her in a fairly gnarly fight scene, but survives thanks to Ryu. She's later sent on a mission to investigate a suspicious dam in India where Sin has a secret base. She scuffles with Jury again before making it into the base and discovers important computer files on Sin's evil Bleas project, which she promptly deletes. Kami also discovers one of her doll sisters, DiCapri, who is still under Bison's control. They fight, 
and DiCaprio shows signs of internal struggle, but Bison teleports in and tells Cammy that her sister DiCaprio is dying. Thinking Bison is the only one who can save her, Cammy relinquishes DiCaprio to him, now with a stronger drive than ever to save the rest of her sister dolls. Street Fighter V sees the full-fledged return of Shadaloo and M. Bison as the latter has launched his latest mysterious and world-threatening scheme. Said scheme involves using Black Moon satellites to spread chaos throughout the world and thus surge his psycho power to its maximum limits. Cammy learns of this plan while trying to find more of her doll sisters, and helps out Team Good Guys as they track down special keys to stop the Black Moons and infiltrate Bison's secret base. At one point, she has an interesting conversation with Chun-Li as the pair watches Ken Master saying goodbye to his son Mel before they go on a mission. We get a brief hint at perhaps the most interesting part of Cammy as she expresses confusion at the very concept of family. She again has one of these moments while in Brazil, as she and Chun observe Laura and Sean Matsuda engaging in some playful sibling wrestling. Much of Cammy's SF5 subplot sees her continue to interact with DiCaprio, whom she encounters while in Brazil as well. Cammy begrudgingly fights and knocks out her sister doll, who is still under Bison's control. The police show up with plans to arrest DiCaprio, and Chun-Li even recommends handing the KO doll over to the authorities, but Cammy gives us a glimpse of her true priorities when faced with choosing family or the law, and goes as far as a temporary alliance with Jury in order to choose her sister. Jury drives them from Brazil to London, don't ask questions, and DiCaprio comes to and starts attacking Cammy yet again. Jury suggests that Cammy simply kill her as she's become a lost cause, but Cammy knocks her sister out once again, and then Vega shows up. Seeing Cammy's fierce defending of a now unconscious DiCaprio, Vega notes that he sees a beauty that has been born of conflict with past memories, before attacking and knocking out Cammy. Jury fends him off, however, and he then flees. Now, during the story's final assault on the Shadaloo base, Cammy is horrified to find that Fong still has control of the rest of the dolls as most of them come out to fight her. DiCaprio fights alongside Cammy and they take on the dolls until the rest of the good guys are able to stop Bison's plan and that unbrainwashes all of the dolls and then they join Cammy and DiCaprio as one big happy family. So where should things go in Street Fighter VI? Well, two of the biggest themes that have followed Cammy through the years are identity and family, neither of which she's had in the traditional sense. She's a force for good, to be sure, but she's a sister above all else as she's found a true identity in being a savior and a leader for her unconventional family. She's finally able to surround herself with the dolls now that she's saved them and unbrainwashed them at the end of A Shadow Falls, and there's actually a bit of a time jump from SF5 to SF6 with Street Fighter 3 in between. So perhaps Cammy and her 12 other sisters have made a good bit of progress developing a truly familial relationship and integrating into society. Hence why we finally see SF6 Cammy in more casual street attire instead of her usual battle leotard. Recalling how Bison originally created Cammy as a replacement body because his own was deteriorating, what if we learn that he extracted some of the essence of each of the 12 dolls in order to create her, and doing so caused them to very slowly deteriorate with the symptoms only manifesting now, years later? What starts with hair falling out and wounds that fail to heal grows into more intense symptoms by the day, and Cammy stands to lose both her family and a major part of what defines her identity if the rest of the dolls die. Also, it's worth pointing out that this would technically mean she's actually related to them on the level of DNA. So she sets out to track down the newest big bad guy, which is likely JP, so she can gain an audience with him and see if he has the power to save the dolls. She does finally make it to JP, and after beating him into submission, of course, she learns that he does indeed have the power to save her sisters, but it's at a cost. He'll have to use Cammy's similar but superior DNA to stop the dolls from breaking down and restore them, but the process involves sapping her entire essence back into the power of the Earth, JP really looks to be related or connected to G in some way, before dispersing it through the dolls and saving them. Not only will she die, but her sisters will not remember her when they are restored. Others like Chun-Li and Guile surely will, but the connection Cammy had to her family, again the defining and most important part of who she is, will be sacrificed. To the horror of Team Good Guys, she agrees to do this and dies. That's right, Cammy from Street Fighter dies. Do it, cowards. And then, skip a game before inevitably bringing her back again in Street Fighter VIII, either via cloning or maybe a tree that sprouts out of the earth, or forgetting that you had killed her off to begin with it. I don't know, but I'm sure Capcom can definitely make it happen. 
This could make for an especially emotional and very high stakes ending to the game's story, and writers could even hint at her possible return in an after the credits sequence if they really wanted to dole the blow. What do you guys think of this potential path for Cammy in Street Fighter VI? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and leave a like, and then check out these other full story recap and speculations for Street Fighter VI videos for other Street Fighter characters. My name is John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.